we've gone in on the assumption, this is the myth, that a friendly government has asked us to come in and prevent a takeover. Well, what friendly government? That government has changed half a dozen times since that time. It changes from week to week. No one knows just what the government is. I am very much impressed by the military and economic and the social programs instituted by General Khan. I appreciated also the opportunity to talk with the Chief of State, General Mann. In other words, you, you cannot defeat the communists without the support of the people. And to have this support, you must bring justice to the people. In other words, equality and freedom. How do you achieve this now? Justice, justice. Banish corruption. Give to the people a higher standard of living. and make them feel free. Would Kennedy have done what Johnson has done? There were two things that he very, very much wished to avoid. One was making this an American war. As he used to say, it's their war, the South Vietnamese. We can give them aid, we can even give them advisors. But they must win it or lose it. And I think he was fully prepared to let them lose it rather than make it an American war. He felt that if we put Americans in there, it would drive, with their white faces, it would drive communism into the, uh, nationalism into the arms of communism. The second thing he wished to avoid was internationalizing the war, as we called it. By this, we meant bombing the North or attacking the North. First and foremost, because it would not work. And here, 30 some odd months of bombing has shown that his judgment was right. I think that uh, uh, there's great danger in this country uh, because of the fact that so much of our economy is geared uh, in the military area. There is grave danger of uh, a military uh, industrial alliance of a kind uh, actually affecting policy. Now, uh, Vietnam is a case in point, uh, not the only place because we're spending $50 billion a year outside of Vietnam for military. And uh, I do think that uh, having dropped more bombs on Vietnam than were dropped by all the Allied powers in World War II in tonnage on that small country, I mean, it's, to me, it's just how silly can you get? <laughs> Communist aggression must result in communist disaster. <laughs> and I don't think you're going to get that at the conference table. <laughs> and the world is watching us in Vietnam. To see if we'll put our money where our mouth is, it's just that simple. And I just wish that uh, uh, we would decide to win the war and that we would step out and close the port of Haiphong and hit every military renumerative target over there. And I think you're uh, a better chance to bring the communists to the conference table uh, than if we uh, do not hurt them. However, American instinct makes us want to jump in with both feet and get an unpleasant job over with as soon as possible. But traditional oriental patience makes them willing 
to carry on the struggle into generation after generation, if necessary. We're fighting a war over there with a commodity most precious to us and held far more cheaply by the enemy, the lives of men. I don't think it's necessary to uh, have an invasion of North Vietnam. And it would be just exactly what the enemy wants. He'd like us to put down 100,000 men in the field, and they put down 100,000. They're willing to lose half of theirs, and ours is a precious commodity. And I wouldn't trade one dead American for 50 dead Chinamen. We must fight the war from our strength, not the enemy's. We must fight it at least cost to ourselves and the greatest cost to the enemy. We must change the currency of this game from man to materiel. What's that? What is the greatest single problem we're facing in Vietnam? Well, it's the despicable communist enemy. There's no question about it. And the sooner we smash him, as we should have done in Korea. If we'd done it in Korea in our first test of arms with communism, we wouldn't be confronted, I don't think, with the situation we have in Vietnam. Do you have respect for the Viet Cong? Do you think they're a good soldier? Well, there's no question about it. They're willing to die readily, as all Orientals are. And uh, their leaders will sacrifice them, uh, and we won't sacrifice ours. The only solution I see is to use our strength, our air and naval power, in the most humane possible m manner possible to destroy North Vietnamese capability to wage war against the free people of South Vietnam. So I think the sooner that we hit everything we can, and hurt them over there, we got a better chance to win that war, and that's exactly what we should do, in my opinion. So the harbor at Haipong, and the entire capacity to receive outside help, close it. <laughs> the power system that fuels every war-making facility, the transportation system, rails, rolling stock, bridges, yards, eliminate them. Every factory and every industrial installation, beginning with the biggest and the best, and never ending so long as our two bricks still stuck together. And if necessary, the irrigation system on which food production largely depends. We must be willing to continue our bombing until we've destroyed every work of man in North Vietnam if this is what it takes to win the war. Then there was a little crisis there. Uh, the military thought that there was a great infiltration. And Secretary McNamara went out and came back and said, no, there wasn't a crisis at that time. But I thought it was very significant that President Johnson then appointed a committee to prepare a list of targets in the North in case he should decide to bomb the North. The more I thought about this, the more I became convinced that if there were a crisis, he would escalate the war. This is part of the steady escalation that's taken place uh, during the last five years. Uh, first, we sent in only advisors. Then it uh, developed these advisors were also in combat. Then we sent in the Marines, and the first thing was said that they were there only to defend. And the next thing was that they would shoot back if attacked. And uh, now uh, there is an admission that uh, they're, we're all in. Some others are eager to enlarge the conflict. 